When I started, I never thought of the pianos as being old. I always thought that they would probably live forever. We're not sitting on that. At the end of the 19th century, Australia had more pianos per capita than anywhere else in the world. Everyone aspired to buying a piano. I'm not very good at saying no. Somebody calls me up and they live miles away. And I'll take that as a challenge. I'll find a way to get up there. And at the moment, this is my home. Um, uh, it's, it's basic, but it's, uh, it's got a, a roof over my head, so I'm just adapting to my surroundings. There's the piano, there's the people, and I'm able to multitask. I can fix the piano, and if they want to talk about their story. You see, it's something that I know. If I die, I'm happy. This is a wonderful world. I've often been told you've been born in the wrong time. We sing together, we read aloud stories. A family is entertaining. It took me 25 years to find Martin. We're also living in there. How exciting. There's what we're living in that one too. It's a bit like a heart, you know, the heart valves and whatever. It's a miracle. They're just dying all over the place. Now I can get stuck getting a bit sad and depressed about it. I can actually even get worried thinking, well, what happens if next year I get less people calling me for piano tuning and the year after that less and less. They've all got electric pianos now. And we can have a cremation on the day because I have one there that is ready to be, to be burned. But I want to keep it. One, two. love pianos, you get in there and you love them and you can, you gotta love them, hold them close. It's not too close otherwise you bugger the dampers. <laughs> 